It is the best show in town. It is the best LGBTQIA show. So darling, why haven't you subscribed? Monday to Thursday, bringing you breaking news wahala. And Friday, sex, education. And Saturday, burning questions. You know, all those questions you've been thinking of asking. Saturday is the day for you, darling. Ask your questions. Your questions about religion. Your questions about what you want to know about us. Your questions about anything you can access anything on saturdays doing burning questions and you know one thing you could to be the lucky winner to win our giveaways on saturdays and on sundays to crown it all we have the market women and shade girls so darling why do you want to miss out on all this interesting thing help this channel by clicking the subscribe button Everybody, I just came back from the office right now where Ella and her husband beat me up. She strangled my neck and she gave me this these bruises. As you can see in my hands here. Yeah. This drama has been going on, ongoing, but let's just start with because it's very, it's a very long story, different parts. But let's start with the recent um um worker that came out to call Ella. Ella is the ED, the executive director of a dynamic initiative for health and human rights, D-I-H-H-R. So her name is um, Ella, Ella David and um, Etty, Miss Ella David Etty. So her worker has called her out, Samantha has called her out. Because Samantha said that she was bullied by Ella, she punched Ella, uh, punched that. We'll show you some of the videos, by the way, just hold on. This episode promised the more of revelation that she choked her. Samantha said she choked her, even her husband, which in uh, joined in beating her up, dealt with her mercilessly, used the khaki on her, something, all sorts of that. Basically, the main story is that she was brutalized by Miss Ella, who was the idiot of the organization. I said one of the, that the only thoughts that she knew that she had was that she used part of um, Ella's documents, um, or part of um, the company's documents, to try and get, um, she, because she's trying to also launch her own NGO. So she took some, you know, some what's the word, copy, we know when you copy some people's their statements, their words, their, their, um, policies. their policies. Company yeah, policies. Anyway. They company, copy the company policies and she applied that. So that's her only mistake. But she felt like at least she could have said to you, but she could have, even if it was to pay like a compensation or something, like she does not, she, even if she doesn't have the money, she could have waited. But she didn't like the fact that she was brutalized, she was demonized, she was beaten mercilessly by Ella and also her husband to join in it. Ella's matter has been on our table for a long time. People have been tabling Ella's matter. People have been, you know, like you said, journalists does not be the source, but Ella's matter has been on the long run on our table. But today, we're going to talk about it this week. I think this week is going to be all about Ella's matter, our NGO. Even other people you know we have different stories. There are also, there's also an NGO too that they are telling us to even talk about too, but that one will be sometime later. But let's just focus on Ella. So guys, just kindly watch this video. So you guys watch the video about Samantha and listen to the audio recordings too, because we have a lot of audio recordings from Samantha too. Like I said, you guys should be patient. This episode promises to be very engaging, promises to be very, very interesting. So listen, watch this video, listen to this recording. When we come back, we're going to take it from me and dive into the topic of me. So please guys, kindly watch. Everybody, I just came back from the office right now where Ella and her husband beat me up. She strangled my neck and she gave me this, these bruises, as you can see in my hands here. Yeah. Some of them are here on my finger. There is a platform that she has created, it, 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 a trans platform and all that. What she's doing in that platform, she's trying to turn them against me. But I've, by the special grace of God, I have had my share of relationship 
one on one with a lot of them that are in that very platform and they know they know so the the, the problem is from her all these things that she's going about doing this doing that me i do not have a problem i came to the office to give her the key i gave her the key i wanted to she made me to almost lose what i want to do from report out training campaign for that very night i was so upset by that when i started calculating all the things that she have doing from pefa from she made me to lose my 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 scholarship my scholarship for for rainbow academic there is a lot of things that when i all those things on my head when I came to the office, she told me that I should come and give her the keys to the office. When I gave her the keys, I was going out. And I was going out, I wanted to look for a human rights activist or probably somebody to talk to because my heart was bitter at that time. I went to her house to ask her to give me that system so that I could get what I want. She refused, she slammed the door. Only for her to come off in the office in the morning and started screaming my name. I handed over the office key to her. I was on my way to leave when she come and banged the door and she locked it and told me that I'm not going to co go out. I said, I will step out of this gate and you will not do anything. You cannot deprive my fundamental human right of movement. You can't. She told me that I'm in her space. That it is in her space that I am. So I cannot move. I tried to open the door. She pushed me and she started punching me and Uche and I just looking. She will beat me, beat me, beat me. He's, he's looking until she packed me by the by, 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 by the leg and my head was down on the interlock. Then what did she do? She put her hand round towards my neck, around my neck, and then she, you know the way wrestlers used to hold, and then she held it tight until he saw that she was going extreme before he started shouting on her to leave that this is what me, I want them, I want her to do. I don't even understand. She now says she does not care. To an extent that she, she and him almost have a little cl slight clash when he was telling her not to go that extreme because he has seen how life-threatening it was. She locked the, door, the gate with the key and refused to let me go outside. And later she now came back. She was she she was insulting my mother that I'm a witch. My mother is a witch. There's nothing that she did not say. If they burn me well, if my mama opened to burn me well, make I come out for gates. May she see. I I did not go to school. I, I do I have a degree, a pauper like me? Uche now come open the mouth, they talk that people like you that do not have degree are not supposed to open their mouth and talk. By the special grace of God, I might not have the degree, but if I should stand and talk, you that have it, the innovation that comes, the innovation that comes from my head and the things I speak from my mouth, you cannot compete with it. They started telling that these days I used to feel myself, I feel that I know it, I know it's too much. That he, he was standing there when he saw me, that was the day before this incident, that he saw me speaking with somebody, speaking with somebody on the phone, and I'm telling the person that I'm, I'm going to send the person some, some, some things, some documents, some link. And then he now rushed to go and tell her that, me, I said I want to send the office documents to somebody. And that was when she started tracking me. I was speaking with a friend. His name is Dicky. She even came and saw the name Dicky. The way his name was Dicky and she was laughing. She has to peep through my name to see that person. And she was laughing. But I know she actually came so that she would see who that person is. I was speaking to him. He's a graduate of agriculture. He based in India and he's an Indian. I was speaking to him and I was asking him that how can he use agriculture to empower people, resident people, LGBTQ community that are in India. That was what I was talking to him about. I was uh, While we were even having that conversation, I was telling him about SDG goals and he said he's not too aware of that. He bought the idea that I was giving to him. He said he doesn't know about SDG gold, international development. I said, okay, Dicky, I'm going to forward the link to link for, for SDG. It's SDG, Ella's 
organizational property that Uchenna has to go and tell Ella that I am I am sending organizational document to somebody. And that was when she started being suspicious. She collected my system and take it and go and check it. And she saw that I want to start a dream liberation organization and I'm using her policy. And that was why Ella came to the office with her husband to beat me up. So you see that the way that matter take the, she removed her designer's high heels, which I don't know, not in, on my head. I wish my head is not braided. I will have broken, you will have seen cuts on my head. I be mumun away, we say, so I go leave office, they work out, they come outside like this, they cry. They forced me to take out a sewing machine that is worth 40,000 Naira. I, I don't even know where I kept that sewing machine as, as I'm talking right now. I don't know where I dumped it because I couldn't carry it. They forced me to take it out. When I brought it out, I left it somewhere there and I went my own way. She wants to run the organization. She wants people that are slaves, people that she will say, go, come. For all the people that came and, and left, those people rejected that attitude. I was the only person that stood, I endured. People will not know. I will come outside, people will see me and people will be thinking as if I'm happy. I am not, but I'm just trying to hold on. Until when I started doing some certain things, I said, no, I need to own my narrative. Until that time, I started saying no to some certain things. How can you come and meet me and tell me to challenge Doshima because she's presenting? For what now? I should tell you what me and Doshima. You are, I, should, I should tell you about my life. I'm always being secretive. What do you want? This whole thing is not about policies. Though. This whole thing is, be, is because I am not, she's not, I am not telling her the things that I am doing anymore. And I don't buy her ideology anymore. That is the pain that is fueling all those things. She was asking me to stand up and challenge those Shima on present, in one presentation. Why will I do that? Why will I do that? Let her post anything that she feels like posting. I am not that premature. I, I don't I, I, I have sense and I'm led by the Holy Spirit. If she feels that I done anything wrong, the world has watching. Let everybody see and judge. If I were if I use your policy and you do not like it, I am sorry. You. If you take me to the police station for doing that, which I know that is my only crime, I might apologize. If I can't pay for damages, they lock me up. Last, 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 last. I don't even know what will happen, but I know definitely I will come out. So I don't know all these things that she's, she's copying people to tell them that if they engage with me, they are, she, they are at their risk. She's trying to do as much as possible to see that that organization that I want to start does not come to light. That is her plan now. The, 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 the pain there is not because I use the policy. The pain is because I wanted to start up a movement and I'm breaking away from her. And why is she pain? I wish I have learned anything there, but I've not learned anything in that very space, I can tell you. So now that we are back, you guys have seen the video and listened to the recordings. So first, I would like to go first. Unusually, or unlike, unlikely before, Tim Reza is the one going first. But today, I would love to go first. I would like to be the one to go first. So first, I would like to start with this. Ella actually responded because on our show, we try to be as balanced as possible. So I'm going to try and read Ella's response. Let me see if I can get that quickly here. Oh, I can, I can, thank you. So this is Ella's response. So good day, board of organizers. Good day, board of, board of the organizers and partners. I hope this weekend meets you well. I'm laying a disclaimer on one of the staff of the organization, Lashon Samuel. 
uh, also known as Samantha, who worked in the capacity of the associate program coordinator, that working with her is at your own risk. She was caught trying to steal official and confidential documents of our organization. She used the organization's laptops, a laptop, to do this and forgot to delete it, thinking she had sent it to her phone. She also used the name of the organization, organization to apply for a program in, in reports out, which, uh, which recently concluded a training this November 2021, and also like our, our organization is aware and endorsement of our application for this training. This we later got to know with evidences attached. The documents were, confidence, were confidential policies, sexual health exploitation and abuse, and she policy, and the organogram of the organization which she intended to use for the lead, seeking for funding from, fund, uh, from funders. She also as she was also assisted by a Nigerian trans woman, Amanda, in the hospital. Uh, doing, she was assisted by, let me repeat again, she was also as, being assisted by a Nigerian trans woman, Amanda, in the hospital during this process. Don't worry, we're going to talk about, um, about Amanda to uh, back and forth with Amanda in the next, probably next episode, this episode about Samantha, because Samantha, we've been getting a lot of, a lot of trans people have been coming out to speak about this issue, even Samantha, we get a recording, so we we'll focus on Samantha for this episode. So moving on, uh, every organization has its unique policy and retirement processes. But she copied and pasted these our documents and renaming them to reflect the new organization name and replace executive program coordinator with executive program director in which she was secretly starting up. Meanwhile, she was receiving the payments every month. I decided to see her the next day to discuss the issue in person at the office because I had no prior knowledge about the organization since she was being paid from my organization under DIHHR and never gave any approval for organization's documents and policies to be used by any external organization, only to meet her waiting for only, only to meet her waiting for me in the within the compound of the office. I had not even sat down to discuss it when she pounced on me, threw the office keys at me, and tried to choke me up while I was questioning her good behavior. <laughs>